Now the electrovalency of an ion basically tells us how many positive or how many negative charges it's got. And if we have a table of electrovalencies, so if we, if we know the electrovalencies, how positive or how negative an ion is, we're actually able to figure out the molecular formula of ionic compounds. So an ionic compound is when two different ions uh, are attracted to each other to form uh, a compound. So uh, just over here, I've got a whole bunch of uh, cations. So I've got a whole bunch of um, positively charged atoms or ions, sorry, and a whole bunch of negatively charged ions. So sodium is Na+, plus, potassium's uh, K+, plus, lithium has got a charge of one, silver's got a charge of one, uh, chlorine's Cl-, minus, fluorine is a single charge of minus, uh, bromide, iodide. Uh, if we go down the table again, uh, lots of these have got a, just a positive charge of one. Magnesium has a charge of two plus, uh, so it's, it's a cation with a charge of two plus. Uh, oxygen, uh, has a, a charge of two minuses. Uh, going down the table again, you know, lead, two, two positives. Aluminium, three positives. Uh, iron can be either iron two with a charge of uh, two positives or iron three with a charge of three positives. Uh, and down here we've got some negatively charged ions. Uh, and sulfate is actually uh, sulfur and oxygen. Uh, SO4 is the compound, but it's got a charge of, of two minus. Carbonate is CO3, and then the charge is two minus. Phosphate is PO4, the charge is three minus. Uh, and, and when nitrogen becomes an ion, it becomes a nitride ion, which is just, again, got a charge of three minus. So we can use all of, the, all of this information in a table of electrovalencies to figure out um, ionic compounds or, or the formula. So this is using electrovalencies. So I'll give you an example, and an example is sodium chloride. So we think about sodium chloride. Well, we look at the table of electrovalencies and sodium is Na+, plus, and chlorine is Cl-. minus. So here we've got you know, a positively charged ion and we've got a negatively charged ion. And the question is how many of these are they going to be together so that overall the compound becomes neutrally charged? Well, this one's not too hard. If we have one plus here and we have one minus over here, then they will actually, one of each will cancel each other out. So if we have one sodium ion and one chloride ion, then they will become, they'll you know, join together, the plus will cancel out the minus to become sodium chloride and then there's no charge. So this is the, the formula for sodium chloride. When the two ions get together, those the plus, plus and the minus charge, they cancel each other out. Um, let's try a bit of a harder one here. Uh, lead nitride here is another one. So lead is uh, Pb, two plus, it's got a charge of two plus. Uh, nitride is N three minus. So the question here is how many lead ions do we need to go with how many nitride ions so that overall the compound, when they're joined together, has a charge of you know, a neutral charge, no overall charge. Um, so in fact, we often look for, for the lowest common denominator, you know, the, the thing that they've both, you know, when you multiply them, the, the lowest number that they can both multiply to. So if you multiply um, this two, you can, it can add up to six. So if we have three of those charges, three two charges, so if we have plus a plus charge and a plus charge and a plus charge and a plus charge and a plus charge, that's five and then six. If we have six of them, we would actually then need how many, we would need six of these. So if we had, if we had three LEDs, we would need to have to cancel those, all of those six positively charged three lead uh, ions, we would need to have two nitride ions. So, so two times three is six again. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what we've got here is if we have, if we have three leads, three two pluses, that'd be six. And if we have two three minuses, that'd be six. And then they would cancel each other out. So that's exactly what happens. So we end up with three of um, these lead ions, and that's what this little subscript number down here means. So charges a superscript up high, and the numbers of uh, atoms, you know, or compounds together is down here. So three, uh, two pluses, along with two of these three minuses, gives us six, 
and six, which cancel each other out, so it becomes a neutrally charged compound. So this is, you know, lead nitride is PB. We need three of those ions to go with two of the nitrogen or nitride ions to end up with a neutral compound. So let's look at another example. Here we've got iron 2 phosphate. We look over at the table of electrovalencies. Iron 2 has got, uh, it's a cation and it's got a charge of 2 plus. And phosphate, so um, phosphorus and oxygen joined together, that ion has a charge of uh, 3 minus. So there's always four oxygens with phosphorus and together that, that ion has a charge of minus 3. So against how many uh, of these positively two charged ions do we need to go with how many of these negatively ch three charged ions? So it's again, it's the smallest common denominator. Again, it's going to be six here. So if we had three of these um, iron ions, <laughs> three of these iron or well, iron uh, cations, three times two is six positives. And if we had two of these phosphate ions, two times three is six negatives and, and they would then cancel each other out. And that's exactly what we have. So we have three uh, of these iron two cations to go with two of these phosphate uh, anions. And really importantly, this uh, compound here, this, this phosphate ion always has one phosphorus atom and four oxygen atoms. So it re this really has to be in uh, brackets here and the two means there's two of this entire thing. So not just 42, you know, if we had the brackets out, it's, it's two of the phosphates. Now that's actually all quite tricky. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you a little trick as to how you can use electrovalencies to calculate or to figure out the uh, correct ionic compound formula. So up here, back to sodium chloride. So sodium's got a charge of uh, plus one, chlorine's got a charge of uh, minus one. What you can do is you can grab this, well, it's got a one here, but it's, you know, so we don't write the one. We can grab that nothing and put it here and grab the number from there and put it here. And so that will tell you what it is. So there's no number here. So you put, don't put a number here on the, if there's no number on the left, don't put a number on the right. There's no number here on the right. Don't put any number on the left. Uh, Let's have a look at the other one to make it a little bit clearer. Here I've got lead nitride. So this number two, the charge of two, we take that number and zip it down to the other side. There's the number two there. And this number here, if we zip that down to the other side, lead nitride is PB3N2. And again, just to demo that with iron two phosphate, here's the number two. Um, put that down, the one on the left, down onto the right. Grab this three from the top, take it from the top, put it top right, put it down to the bottom left, and there it is, it's Fe3PO42. So that's a, a, a tricky way to enable you to calculate ionic compounds without actually doing any calculating. You just grab the number, which is on the top left, put it on the bottom right, grab the number on the top right, put it on the bottom left, and that will always guarantee you that you have the correct uh, ionic compounds. So that's all about electrovalencies, and that tells you uh, whether an ion is, how positively or how negatively charged it is. And you can also use that information to calculate or you know, to figure out the correct formula, the correct chemical formula of these ionic compounds.